Oliver Twist. The world is a strange place, plagued by the bad and saved by the good. Our story leads us to both. This is the story of Oliver Twist, who was brought to an orphanage in the town of Mudford on one rainy, stormy night. I found this poor child. Please take him in. All right. Oliver Twist lived the first 10 years of his life in the orphanage. These were 10 years of having no family, no one who really cared, and almost no food. This is just too little. I was so hungry last night, I could hardly sleep. We have got to ask for more. Who will do that? The cook will beat us if we do. I have a plan. Whoever gets the half stick will ask for more. Okay. 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 Please, sir, I want some more. What did you just say? Sir, I want some more. I'll teach you to get more. Let go of him. You will revolt against me. You'll pay for this twist. You'll pay. Not only was Oliver punished for asking for more soup, he was also thrown out of the workhouse and sent to a carpenter as an apprentice. Here, Oliver. This is where you will work. Noah, this boy is your responsibility. He is going to share your room. Teach him our art. Yes, sir. So, what have we got here? A sickly creature? Of what good are you going to be to me? Sharing my room? Come on. This is never going to happen. Got it? Then I shall tell Mr. Sourberry. Really? What in the world? Mr. Sourberry? Mr. Sourberry? I fell over the wood and the blade might have killed me, sir. But, sir... Enough, Oliver. If I ever hear of you behaving like this again, I shall personally take care of you. Do you understand? You better get used to this. The orphanage has given you here for seven long years. <laughs> Oliver gathered his things and ran away into the night. He walked for weeks. Making his way to the city of London, far away from the orphanage and far away from Mr. Sourberry and the terrible Noah. Sweet gooey croissants for just five pence a piece, just five pence a piece. Lad, get away from here. This one's on me. Thank you. Never seen you around here before. New to London? Yes. I am Jack. They call me the Artful Dodger around here. What are you called? My name is Oliver. Oliver Twist. Run away? Don't worry, Oliver. I know of a man who will keep you with him at no cost. Come with me. Thanks. The Artful Dodger took him to a man called Fagin, who stayed in a secluded part of London. Artful Dodger and several other children also stayed with him. Open up, it's me. And who's that with you? 
that is all of a twist. He is all right. He's with me. All of a twist. You look hungry, lad. Charlie, get him some food. Let me put those away. We make wallets around here. Sit. Ah, there's your food. Perhaps for the first time in his life, Oliver had a hearty meal and soon fell asleep. Tomorrow we shall go out with you all. That soon? Well, the sooner he learns the better, otherwise I have no use for him around here. Make sure nothing goes wrong, all right? The next morning, Fagin sent Oliver out with the boys for business. Oliver had no idea what that business was. He simply assumed that it was to make wallets. Go, and remember, you have to work to stay here, yeah? Yes, sir! Good day, Mr. Brownlow. Good day, Mr. Collins. Now watch! Thief! Thief! Oliver was shocked to see that the real business of Fagin and his boys was not to make wallets, but rather to steal them. The artful Dodger and Charlie ran away. The crowd thought that Oliver was the thief and began chasing him. Soon, a policeman caught up with him and arrested Oliver. Come here, you. I shall take you to the magistrate and you shall get a good seven years in prison. Officer, seven years? That's rather harsh, isn't it? No, the magistrate will have to make an example out of him. Serves the thief right. Oliver was taken to the court and presented before the magistrate. Mr. Brownlow pleaded for mercy for the little boy, but the magistrate was strict and unmoving. He was just about to send Oliver to prison for seven years when Mr. Collins got there. Uh, sir! I did not steal anything! Officer, you arrested him from the site? Yes, sir. The entire crowd was chasing him when I got to him. My lord, seven years is too harsh. Don't you interfere with the matters of the law, sir. I pronounce the boy to be sent. Wait, sir! What is it? How dare you interfere with the matters of the court? I beg your pardon, sir. But this boy is innocent. The real thief escaped. I saw it with my own eyes. Officer, did you not actually see him stealing? No, sir. Puh. Very well. I pronounce the boy to be released immediately. Follow them. Open up! I have business for you! Yes? That boy, Oliver! I need you to turn him into a thief! Well, he already got caught for thievery. No, he got released and is now with Mr. Brownlow! That is such a relief, the poor boy! You have to get him back and turn him into a thief and tell me everything about him. Where he is from? Who were his parents? Was there a locket on his person when he was brought here? Tell me everything or I shall turn you to the police myself. We know nothing about Oliver except that he is not from London. He is from an orphanage in Mudford. After his ordeal, Oliver was very disturbed and it took him some days to recover. He was well taken care of in Mr. Brownlow's home. Mr. Brownlow, he will be fine. This boy intrigues me. 
when he is stronger, I need to know where he is from, who his parents are. Why are you so interested in the boy's past? He is from an orphanage. She is a friend of mine. My, Oliver's face is so much like hers. She might have been his mother. Precisely, Doctor. She was a family friend. Haven't heard from her for over ten years. Oliver was growing stronger, and Fagin had asked the artful Dodger to keep watch at Mr. Brownlow's residence so that they might kidnap Oliver as soon as he came out of the house. And one day Mr. Brownlow gave him money and asked Oliver to return some books to the bookshop. He is our son. Just very angry right now. We shall take him home. Come on, son. We will get you to the new shoes you wanted. Now just come home and have your dinner. Fagin took Oliver to his house and planned a robbery that night to turn Oliver into a thief just as he had promised monks he would. Let him go! No, Nancy. He will be a part of the robbery. That night, Fagin took Oliver to break into a big, wealthy house. Get in from the window and open the door from inside. If you don't, you have no idea how badly I shall punish you. Now go! Who's there? Who's in the house? Run! This house belonged to Miss Rose Mayfield, and she was filled with compassion when she saw Oliver's pitiful face. She took care of Oliver. One day, a strange visitor came to see her. It is about Oliver. Meet me at the London Bridge tonight at 12, please. Oliver, do you know anything about this? No, miss. It sounds like the woman was Nancy from Fagin's gang, but I know someone who can help. Who? Uh, Mr. Brownlow. He was very kind to me when I was with him. Oh, Mr. Brownlow is a family friend. I shall speak to him at once. So Ms. Rose spoke to Mr. Brownlow, and he agreed to go to London Bridge that night. Nancy was waiting for them. Mr. Brownlow! Miss Nancy, is it? Yes. You had something to tell us about Oliver Twist? Yes. There is a man called Mr. Monks who is determined to turn Oliver into a thief. And he also wanted to know about Oliver's parents and had gone to the orphanage in Mudford to find out about him. He was looking for some kind of a locket. Why, I have no idea. Very well, Miss Nancy. Thank you. I shall have this checked out. So Mr. Brownlow called the beetle from the orphanage and also had Mr. Monks come to his office. So, was there a locket on Oliver's person when he was given to you as a baby? Yes, sir. Here it is. Agnes. So, I was right. Oliver is my friend Agnes's son. May I leave, sir? You kept a locket belonging to the boy with you. You stole it from him. You did not give enough food to the children in the orphanage, and you threw Oliver out only because he asked for more soup? How dare you! I am so sorry, sir. Men like you who steal from children cannot be trusted. You are no longer the beadle for Mudford, and I shall have you sent to jail. Sir! Take him away! Why did you want Oliver to become a thief? Because he is my younger brother, and my father had said that if any of us brothers did anything against the law, all our share of the wealth would be given to the other brother. So you wanted this little child to become a thief so that you could keep his money? Shame on you, monks! By doing this, you have broken the law. You too will go to jail, and your wealth will be passed on to Oliver. 
take him away. Miss Rose, Oliver is your sister Agnes's son. Oh, Oliver. Oliver, you are a wealthy boy, and I want to give you a family too. I want to adopt you as my son, if you don't mind. Oh, I would love that so much. Also, just one request, sir. What is it, Oliver? Please use the wealth I have to help the children at the orphanage and the boys in Fagin's gang. I am so proud of you, Oliver. And don't you worry. I shall ensure that all of the boys go to school and learn to become good and generous, just like you. <laughs> <laughs>